Okay, so welcome to the second major lecture on Groovy DSP. We're going to talk today about everyone's favorite subject, aliasing, because it's going to make your life way more complicated than you'd like it to be. Um, this is stuff that if you're in the analog realm, you don't really usually have to deal with, but in digital audio, it's a phenomenon that's going to mess up uh, your nice, clean, high-pitched tones. And, okay, so last week, we built a Sawwave oscillator. And I said it wasn't really that great of an oscillator. There's some issues with it. We're going to find out exactly what is wrong with it. Um, so let's listen to it for a second. Okay, so we're going to go back and look at the other program that we wrote last time. So here's how it sounds at 440 hertz. Okay, it's, you know, okay, you can hear a little bit of distortion if you listen really closely, and who knows what YouTube is doing to this. Um, but yeah, let's do a note slide up to 880 hertz, and let's see how that really sounds. You hear that? That's, uh, that high-pitched, uh, distortion, listen, high up in the mix, uh, that's called aliasing. Uh, let's make it worse so you can really hear it. We're going to slide up another octave. Okay, so that kind of distortion, you might be thinking, well, you know, low distortion doesn't hurt. And that's true, but this, this isn't the kind of distortion that's going to sound rockin' or, uh, you know, in small doses it can be okay, but if you have this much of it, it's going to render the, you know, the higher octaves of your synthesizer that you want to build, it, it'll render them useless. Um, so we got to understand why it is this is happening. Um, okay, so what's going on here is that there's a limit. In digital audio, there's a limit to high how high of a frequency you can represent, and that's directly proportional to the sampling rate. Um, and let's see, let's see why this is. Okay, so let's take a sine wave. It's a plain sine wave. And remember how digital audio works. You're taking snapshots of a sound. So, you know, if you sample this wave, you know, five times a, a cycle or so, uh, you're good. Uh, you have enough information to reproduce this wave. Um, but it's kind of like a strobe light where if you've ever seen, you know, something spinning under a strobe light and it starts to look like it's moving backwards, that's kind of what's happening here. Um, so let's, let's, let's really make this problem, you know, really visible here. So what we're going to do is we're going to sample some, some equally spaced points, just like we would. This is just totally blown up here. Um, you know, let's, let's, let's say, let's say you, you, this is going so much higher than the sampling rate. You got your snapshot here. You got your snapshot here, here and here. Um, that is not enough information to represent the, this, this pitch here, because what you're going to get, let me take a, a lighter pen, you connect the dots here, and this, this is kind of what a DAC does, right? A, uh, you know, when it gets converted back into something your speakers can, can represent, uh, it's basically connecting the dots. We're going to get into that later. That's a oversimplification, but just so you know, you know, you can kind of estimate it that way. Well, what is this? This is a totally different frequency. Look at that. Yeah, there's no way you can reconstruct this from these dots. That's, you know, not way not enough information. Um, and so what's happening here is that the, it's called aliasing because you, you give it one frequency and what you get out is a, a completely different frequency. The, that's the aliased frequency. It has an alias, like a, like in a spy movie or something. It's undercover as your <laughs> as a frequency you want it to be. Um, there's a really neat correlation uh, between the sampling rate that you set and the highest frequency that you can possibly represent. Um, so, you know, there's a few ways to think about this. One way to think about it is that you need a peak and a trowel to really represent a sine wave. And, and that's what DACs do, you know, a DAC. It, it, it blasts out sine waves. Uh, and we'll look at that later. You know, it, do, it doesn't stair step the way some people think it stair steps. It actually builds up a sine wave uh, or a series of sine waves or usually people say that uh, the highest frequency that can be represented in a sampled signal 
is one half the sampling rate. And that's called the Nyquist frequency after the Nyquist Shannon sampling theorem, which describes this phenomenon. Um, so if you're, you know, at 44 kilohertz, 44.1, um, you know, thousand times a second, you know, 44, 100, uh, that means that you divide that by two, that means our highest frequency is 22,050. That is a pitch of a sine wave you can represent, or the highest frequency in your mix, because everything's made of sine waves. That's that's part of the called the Fourier theorem, um, and that's for you know that's again <laughs> all the stuff I keep saying. Oh, we'll cover it later, and we will. Uh, but yeah, just take it on uh, faith right now that everything's kind of built up of sine waves. Uh, this is the highest pitch, the highest frequency, the most trebly frequency in your mix you can represent, um, and. Uh, that's pretty damn high. This is this is CDs. This is invented in the with the late seventies, um, but yeah. And keep in mind, most mixes they roll off well before you really hit this point. And most people can't hear above seventeen or eighteen kilohertz. I don't think as they as they age. Um, funny, <laughs> not funny, but because uh, I'm getting up there. But uh, yeah, uh, let's uh. Put this through to the test. Let's run some experiments because we're saying, you know, oh, it can represent these really high sine waves. And even, you know, let's say you have a sine wave, and it's so high pitched that your samples are like, you know, they're like this, right? You know, they're, um, you know, you're getting two per cycle, but they're going to be all over the map. Let's let's look at this in Audacity. Okay, so here we are playing a sine wave at twenty thousand hertz. That's really close to Nyquist and yet it comes out of the sound card as a perfect sine wave. And this is so high, I can't even hear it. I know my speakers roll off around there, but uh, it's probably due to, uh, to age. Uh, but yeah, look at this waveform. This is, these are the samples. You can see the individual samples of the sine wave. It doesn't look anything like a sine wave, yet it's perfectly reproduced. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. We've talked about aliasing, which is a kind of distortion that you really don't want because it interferes with not just higher pitches, but it also is gonna make things sound different on different people's systems. So depending on what someone has the sampling rate set to, it could sound wildly different on one person's machine versus another person's machine. And that's no good. Uh, so we've identified it. How do we fix it? Well, we're going to talk about that next time. Some strategies for making oscillators that don't distort in this way. Also, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. You know, there's it's such a cliche, but uh, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Uh, oftentimes, if we don't understand something, it's usually for a good reason. You know, oftentimes we don't have the prerequisites to understand it, or we're just, you know, somehow missing something. Um, and it's not always the most complicated thing that you're missing. So, it, you know, sometimes it's easy to fill in those gaps. So, you know, fire away if you've got questions or, you know, if there's a topic you'd love to see covered, an effect where you'd love to see how this effect works, uh, you know, write in the comments and I'll see what I can do to cover it. Okay, so until next time, um, keep rocking, I guess.